Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity that we have to be here today uh, for this day that you have given us, a day to make a difference, a day to build your kingdom. We look for opportunities to do that, to show our love to one another um, as you have commanded us to do. And Father, just ask that the information presented here uh, is encouraging to all of us and that it also, above all, glorifies you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, my name is Terry Bear. And yeah, that's my real name, Terry Bear. So people are like, <laughs> sound like Teddy Bear. Do people call you that? No, uh, never. Yeah, ex all the time. And uh, yeah, I got teased a, a little bit growing up. You know, mm -hmm. luckily I'm a big guy. Um, so I can take care of myself. And uh, those of you that are close enough, you see the, the name tag there, Bear, or you may have heard, oh yeah, no Bear. And then you're like, oh wait, is that wrong name tag? No, it's a play on my last name there. So I work out at Machindo, I'm the Outdoor Education Director out there, and then I have the wonderful opportunity to be here in the fall to uh, teach Intro to Bio, and that is, uh, that's a lot of fun. So I have kind of two different things. I get to work with sixth graders, fifth and sixth graders, throughout nine months out of the year, and then of course summer camp, and then work with individuals such as yourself during the fall. Uh, so hopefully uh, I can get back and say bye. Right now we have 140 sixth graders at camp running loose and it's awesome. Uh, but today I brought with me some other guests and before we even talk about those, we need, I, I wanna look at learning. That's what we're here to do. We're here to learn. We're here to, to, to discover and the, the definition, Merriam-Webster, uh, the definition, the act or experience of one that, that learns. Nope. I didn't think you were supposed to define a definite with the word, but the act of, so we need to go back and we need to look at learns and that's okay. Uh, but as we go through here, uh, we want to talk about, everyone knows the, the movie, the good, the bad, and uh, don't even think about it. Uh, because we're not going to do ugly today. Because we're going to talk about animals. We're going to we're going to kind of jump in uh, to a little bit of biology and the chemistry of those animals. Oh, because with, without one, you cannot have the other. They hey, have to go hand. They have to go hand in hand. Oh my gosh! If there is no interest. I'm gonna tune you out. <laughs> I'm gonna tune you out right away. If there is no interest, why do I need to, I don't need to listen to that. If there's no interest, I'm not, I'm not gonna be there. I'm not gonna to listen to that. I'm gonna, um, I do not like to stay <coughs> home, as you can see that, but I don't wanna keep running around. So I'm gonna take, put this little jabby in here real quick, cause I'm gonna be kind of uh, all over the place with this. And learning when there's an interest. I am interested in not wrecking my Jeep. That's an interest. Um, that is an so I know that I am going to drive at a certain speed. I'm gonna drive comfortably. I'm gonna I'm gonna follow the rules because also with that interest, why do I have an interest to drive my Jeep and not wreck it? Because there will be an immediate result and reward. That reward is more money in my pocket, but above all, it means that I have been safe to others on the road as well as myself. So, but the learning takes place when we take new information that we have gained, that I hope you gain in here. I want you to gain new information. And how many people do not know what a snake is. Okay, good. And I just saw some people go, oh no, he's not. No, he's not. That's the serpent. That was in the Bible. That was, okay, yeah, we, we know all of that. Um, however, okay, now with that, learning new information. We're going to take that and we're going to apply that to concepts or and concepts that we have previous knowledge of. This is great. Isn't it? This is what we're... The marine plankton food web found in the marine ecosystem. 
Here we included the microbial loop. We want to understand more about these eukaryotic celled animals as we continue through the lecture. We see at the top of the food chain ichthys, small fish. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. For real? <laughs> yeah, that happens. Carl Sagan's book, The Demon Haunted World, right here. I wish I could tell you about inspirational demons. I remember one thing from seventh grade science, and that was taxonomy. <laughs> I remember that. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, theme. I remember all of that. Because Mr. Fox came up, said we're going to do taxonomy, we're going to do kingdom, final, class, or blew us out of the water. And you had to memorize that. You had to know it. You had to, you had to follow. I didn't understand the following, but I knew I had to memorize it. So he said, here we go. King, Philip, Cain, over, four, good, <laughs> spaghetti. Um, yeah, that's what he said. Um, so, but I remember that. That stuck with me, and I was like, oh, I can do this. And then as I wrote down the order, then I began to see, oh, wait, there's an order here. And I kind of got in that groove, and I said, huh, let's take advanced in eighth grade. Let's start looking at this. This is kind of cool. Wait, this, whoa, this actually makes sense to me. I had interest. And we began to look at animals, and we began to say, oh, yeah. Of course, in my coffee, I would love some creamer and some monosaccharides. I would love some season. Hey, no, we didn't talk like we said I want sugar. Okay? I want some sugar. Because if we go, we don't. So, to the young kids, this is science. It's boring. Oh, this is to. <laughs> Because um, I've already signed my contract for next year. Um, so, this is ridiculous. Ain't nobody got time for that. We, we, we can't do this. This does not work for us. We need to reach out to children. We need to reach out to them now. How do we reach out to them? Elementary school? I'm going to go into school. I'm going to go into secular school. Wow. And I'm going to do Mark 12. 31. For those of you, okay, so Jesus, he's out there, and uh, he's out there, he's, he, he's talking to the disciple, he, he's talking to a little crowd there, and one of the scribes, one of the, uh, comes up and says, uh, Jesus, I got, I got a question for you. And he, he, he says this, he asks them, um, what is the greatest, uh, what is the greatest commandment? So right here, 1231, let me get there, um, Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, all your soul, and all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Now we jump into Mark 31. And the second, like it, is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So the scribe said to him, well said, teacher, you are correct. Like Jesus was going to be wrong. <laughs> I, I don't know anywhere where he said, oh, wait, no, I didn't mean that. I meant, no, I did So he's right in saying that because kids, if you don't show, I can come out here with all this knowledge, this wealth of knowledge, but they don't care. If I show them that I care about them, and I'm down there and I'm like, all right, let's look at this problem. Let's, let's take a look. And I get down with that child and I show them how much I care. Whew, that's huge. They do not care how much you know until they know how much that you care. Let's look back in. Let's get some more words from our sponsor. I mean, this is the guy that makes it happen. Uh, let's look, 1428. Right here. For which of you intended to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost 
whether he has enough to finish it. So we're looking at goal setting. We need to have goals. This is how we reach out to children. We show them that we care about them. We ask them about goals. Let's set a goal. What's your goal? Uh, graduate. Oh, let, let's, <laughs> let's go a little smaller here. Well, let, let's, let's, let's look at this. Okay. Nothing is too small. There is no goal too small, no goal too large if we set our mind to it. And we are walking with this. So many people that I know are scared to use the word I'm gonna I'm gonna use it. You can't stop me because I'm up here and I'm gonna I'm gonna say this word. I think I'm gonna say it. I might go and say it twice. Here we go. Genesis 126. Then God said, Let us make man in our in our image according to our likeness. Let them have. Okay, so we're making man. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, over the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. I said earth. I said it twice. Earth. You can say earth. People are like, ooh, hey, you know, you should say, you know, that's what's in here. You. Now it's not your spaceship earth. <laughs> Now that's a little, ooh. Uh, it's not Mother Earth, but it's Earth. Okay, God created it. It is Earth. And this is where we're going to go today with giving responsibility and ownership. I had three people already ask me, can I help? I want responsibility. I want to own what you're doing. I want to do that. I want to help. Man, little children, how many times? Hey, can I help? Uh, no. Can, can I help? No. And then I'm walking down the hall, I'm carrying stuff and stuff's dropping. And that, that child's in, in college now, and they watch me walk by. And I'm dropping something. What's wrong with that kid? Oh, because when he was a little kid, I told him I don't need your help. You, you can't do anything. You can't have ownership. We need to reach out. We need to look at them. Our learning tools. Uh, learning tools that we are going to look at um, are the life specimens that we're going to use for teaching. But we're going to look at the good, the bad, and the don't you even think about it or don't you even dare buy it because you do not want this in your classroom. Uh, so we're going to look at those. And later on, I'm going to have opportunity. They're going to be up here. I'm going to give opportunity if you want to uh, pet, hold them, things like that. Now, the reason we had to get through this is this is, this is you know, the, the, the information here. And uh, they need to get, to get acclimated. And we're going to talk a little bit about acclimation of each one. What animal? You get it out. Middle of the week. Oh, this is a nice day. This is really cool. Um, get it out the next week, put it in a little container, take it downstairs, get it out. Whoa, this is not the same snake. Uh, yeah, it is. But they don't travel well. Uh, green iguanas do not travel well. Um, they don't even move from one room to the next very well. But the animals uh, that I did bring, most of them, most of them <laughs> travel well. Every single animal that I brought bites. Every single animal that I bought will bite. Um, that's, they bite on three reasons. One is they bite when they eat. Okay. Um, none of these animals, contrary to popular belief, uh, none of these animals will eat humans live. Um, so, uh, <laughs> none of these, so, so you don't need to. Yeah, I just saw everybody started waking up and going, oh, I'm alive, I'm alive. <laughs> okay, yeah, those of you that said, okay, when are we gonna be? Yeah, okay, so yeah, everybody's alive, or at least pretending to be. So we have that, we have that going on. And uh, second reason they're gonna bite is if you, if you scare them. Now, if you're in your seats right there, even if you, whoa, whoa, whoa that's all. But if you come up, you're like, whoa, okay, that may scare the animal. And none of these animals <laughs> are going to go, whoa, you're scared. Okay, some of them don't even have hands. Okay, so, whoa, you scared me. Uh, no, so that's not gonna happen. And we're gonna get to that in just a second. And if you heard them. Now, some of them, 
that we're going to talk about will give warning signs. Okay, so let's move on to our first one. Madagascar hissing cockroach. This is our classroom right here. No animals. No animals. This is our classroom. This is what we do. This is the Madagascar hissing cockroach. This is the home range would be Madagascar living on the floor. Diet, of course, vegetables, any other, you know, the, the vegetation that they can find on the forest floor. They live in colonies. They get to be about one and a half to three inches long. The males are larger than the females, and the males also have the, what look like eye spots, are actually horns. Small horns protruding, they're right there uh, in the exoskeleton. I wrote down the enclosure in case this is something you, a five to 10 gallon tank. You need about a half a gallon per cockroach, okay, to live in. They can live in smaller areas, but that's for colonies. That's if you're going to just keep them and breed them. And the more area they have, the more they're gonna breed. You be then to give them more vegetation and fruit. Once they eat fruit, that signals, hey, there's a large surplus. Uh, oranges, once they hit those oranges, yeah, they're like, woohoo, baby making time. Um, and then they will get, begin to reproduce to make your colony larger. The substrate is just peat moss or potting soil. And then the rating for this is good. This is a good classroom pet. And life expectancy, two to three years. This is great. Next animal. Okay, that was boring. <laughs> that was, I got to, I'm ready to fall asleep up here. I, so let's do Madagascar hissing cockroach. Let's take, now, these are hissers. Um, with them, we have, um, oh, little guy. <laughs> We fed, we fed fruit just to see if it would work. <laughs> and then, um, so, yeah. yeah. Um, oh. That is the hissing. Uh, now, don't be, they will probably jump no further. Than, you know, no. Uh, they are not jumpers, and that's why I'm kind of holding them off because. Is he threatened by you oh, right now? And she jumped to the flying leap. That is the way to say, hey, you're bothering me. Get off. I'm scared. So, so I'm a, you know, I, I'm an animal. I'm going down. I'm a uh, little lemur. Curious. So I grab this guy up. I'm like, hey, lunch. All of a sudden he hisses. Oh, well, talking food. Whoa, okay. That's, I didn't expect that to happen. Uh, you know, imagine biting into a slice of pizza and all of a sudden he goes, <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. Don't eat in the DC. <laughs> so yeah, you know to go elsewhere with that. But as we go through, we're gonna okay. Madagascar hissing cockroach. Where do you guys think this guy's from? Where's his where's his home range? All right, great. Right there. Okay, what I want you guys to do, we're in a classroom. So we're writing this, we're writing this stuff down. We're looking at their home range. We decide, hey, that's Madagascar. We're gonna look at their diet. Now, this guy. Um, not not a, a meat eat, not a carnivore in any sense of the form, but he lives down on the floor of the forest in colonies. So he's living in colonies, and they live where the vegetation is, right there where the plant matter is. So what do you think these guys eat? What do you think? They're living right there in the vegetation. So what's one of the things that you think they might eat? Vegetables, the vegetation. This is a full grown male. Let me make sure. Full grown male. Okay, so you can see what size, you know, what, what is this? Two, three, it's about three inches, somewhere right around there. So we're writing this down. We're doing discovery as we go through this, asking these questions, looking at this, these things, where they live, whether they're a good pet or not. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the kids feed them. That's your responsibility. Okay, okay. Um, little Brucey, 
Today, uh, or this week, you are going to be uh, the feeder of, you're going to be all my friends, all of these guys. Okay, that's what you're going to be. That's my job. And, and I'm going to have the food cut. That's your job. You're responsible for that. You're respon that is what you're going to, giving responsibility to the children. That's where we want to go. Now, looking at this next one, and I want to get through all the animals so we're gonna we're gonna speed up a little bit here and uh kind of show okay well let's look at where this animal lives lives in chili eats crickets wax worms roaches <laughs> um it'll eat a pinky mouse and uh, now i have vermiculite there in um, a, yeah, it's italicized because vermiculite is one of those things that you have to find vermiculite without any fertilizers in it. That's difficult to find. Um, so you have to make sure you find that. Also, when you feed them, if you would feed a pinky mouse and that would happen to roll into, pinky mouse, yay big, um, that would roll into the vermiculite and get vermiculite on it, that could cause impaction. Um, yeah. in your animal and make it very difficult for it to eat. So does anyone have a guess of what we might have in here? Okay, so <laughs> we're going to, any other guesses? So we're thinking, okay, it can't be too large because it has to eat crickets, um, but it can get large enough to eat a pinky mouse. Well, we have Chilean, rose hair, tarantula. Now, this is Rosie the second. Um, this is Rosie the second. Um, but the, the, the children, when they come to camp, they see Rosie, and then they come back as cabin leaders, and they're like, do you still have Rosie? We're like, yeah. Yeah? She's over there, and they're like, oh, I do Because I don't want to break kids' heart, so I, I'd rather lie to them. <laughs> oh, I said that on video, didn't I? <laughs> Whoopsie, edit. Um, so anyhow, or, or Cheyenne. Cheyenne, do you, do you have likes uh, tarantulas? You're gonna edit that, right? <laughs> okay, so here we go. This is, this is Rosie. Um, now, Rosie has two defenses. Um, the hissing cockroaches, they hiss or they scurry away. Chilean rose hair, what they're going to do is they're going to take and on the back of their abdomen, whoa, we just learned a new term. We have two body parts here, a cephalothorax and an abdomen. Let's write those down because we're going to look at those later on. Whoa, all of a sudden we're learning. Um, we find these guys arthropods. Whoa, that means jointed legs. Oh, we got so much we have to do here. Let's start writing this down. We're going to learn about, I'm, I'm going to set this guy right down on right over here because we have to write stuff down. We have to learn about this. What's our, well, first thing we talked about was, remember we talked about kingdom. Is that a plant or is that an animal? What is that? Or is, is that a fungus? What, what is that? What kingdom? Why do the males have such a short lifespan? I'm going to get to that in just a second. Animalia, okay? Phylum. Oh, I just said it, yes. Arth. Pod. Poda. Tomato, tomato. Wait, actually, no, nobody says tomato. At least nobody that I know. No offense, but if you walk around, oh, I'd like tomato on my subway. I don't know. Anyhow, whoa, all of a sudden, with just this, now we're breaking into that, and we're going to learn about it. And we're going to look at the jointed legs, arthropod. Wow, now we've got interest. And I'm, I know what joint, I know jointed legs. I know what those are. And now I'm looking at them on Rosie as well. So we have the discovery process going on. Another, uh, what she'll do, like I said, for defense, is on her abdomen, she'll take her hind legs and kick the hairs off. Those hairs will then get in the nasal passages and the eyes 
of predators. And it stings and it burns. Um, and then she will also raise up with her pedipalps, right by her fangs, and do a little punch. Do a little punch. <laughs> Just so you know, this animal is venomous. Doesn't have poison in it. Poison is ingested. Venom is injected. So that means it takes its fangs, pierces through your skin, and injects you with its venom. Chilling Rose here, Tarantula. Rating, good. Uh, they're very docile. You passing it off, docile creature. And any animal that can hold on to me and not bite me while I'm moving around like this is a great test to have. Um, both of these animals do live in these containers right here. The males are smaller and uh, the males are a little more aggressive and they're a little more high strung. Go figure. <laughs> um, and, they have, and they're more dominant of their area. So there's a lot more fighting. There's a lot with, they just have that shorter lifespan because they are always busy bodies and they're always out looking for ladies. They don't rest. They're like, hey, what are you doing? I'm going out tonight. Okay, that's just, that, that's, that's kind of, that's how they roll um, uh, the, these animals. When we break now, we went through um, looking at our arthropods and we can begin to jump into, staying with the same, same kingdom, jumping into uh, different phylums and amphibians. Eastern tiger salamander, they can breathe they take in oxygen, uh, amphibians do, through their skin. Now, let's do a little experiment here. Oh, not chemistry, sorry, but um, I know. Uh, I just got my hand wet, moist. That was just a dry piece of paper. I just ripped it off right there, and I go, adhesion, okay, water molecule. Mm, I didn't want to uh, Okay, uh, so uh, the water about the adhesion right there. Uh, wet hand, stick to something dry. If you read popsicles and you read the, the, the packaging, there's a warning label on there now that to use caution because it may stick to your tongue. That takes some fun out of it. We're going, okay, you can eat me, baby. You know, you're like, hey, you didn't wait, did you? Okay, that's good. If I grab this salamander up out of here without wetting my hand, then we're going to have a serious problem because they are moist. Okay, they're moist. And uh, right there, you see living peat moss potting soil. Inexpensive. Inexpensive right now. And with wetting my hand allows it to move around and I'll continue to do that and give them a little water and uh, just use regular water. Now a lot of people, oh, you need to use distilled water. Well, you don't want to use distilled water. That takes some of the, but we do let our water set for 24 hours. Does anyone know why we let the water set for 24 hours? Okay, remove it, yes. Oh, somebody was like, oh, I know that. Yeah, okay, great. It's removing the bleach and the chlorine uh, and, and, and the fluoride that is that is put in there. Removing those unwanted, but leaves in some of the minerals, the lime, okay? Leaving other, other minerals, uh, trace amounts of minerals in our water for the Eastern Tiger Salamander. Uh, afterwards, like I said, now, all of these animals must have a hide area. They must have an area to hide in. That is very important for stress. They have to have a hide and you have to put that hide back where you found it so that they are comfortable when you take them out of their environment. Our green tree frogs. Looking here, these are jumpers. But look at this, so far, uh, vegetation, that's simple. Crickets, or breeding these guys, and the little ones go over here. And then here at, and 
that's a food chain in a classroom, okay? That's, once you, amphibian, give the hand a voice, go right in here and grab one of our great tree frogs. These guys are jumpers. Uh, they're, uh, yeah, I thought he was getting ready and going to take a flying leap. Um, incredible uh, jumpers, very easy to feed. The thing that you have to realize is their mouth, even though you're thinking, oh, I can feed them, their mouth is, is kind of tiny. So when feeding, you have to make sure that the cricket is small enough to get into their mouth. So we have a great, none of these animals have been very difficult for me to handle. So that's why they all get that good rating. The substrate that they live in, once again, we're looking at potting soil, climbing sticks. I've actually lowered their climbing sticks, but they still climb right up the glass. Um, interesting about the tree frogs, which is different from the geckos, is the tree frogs climb up the glass by using suction. Geckos will climb up the uh, uh, Professor Bear? Yes. He is. Oh, he's, yeah, he's good. Um, this is Sunkist, one of our leopard geckos, a cross tangerine breed, that's why she has a color. Now, um, leopard geckos do not use an electrical charge to climb up glass. There are other geckos that do use, and it's, it's, you have electricity in your body right now. Yeah, for real, Zian. Um, especially when you get hit by a taser. No, um, but you have that <laughs> electricity in you right now, and geckos can turn that off and on through pads in their fingers. It's not a suction, it's the electrical charge that they put through there to allow them to climb up. Now, uh, I rated geckos as bad when I was using the water and then wiping my hand off. I, I'm doing these in a very specific order because I wanted to get all the oils off my hand. Even though this is a reptile, maybe we should talk about the difference between reptiles and amphibians. Oh, that's another lesson right there. Boom, there we go. But looking at this, uh, skin is, they have delicate skin. I want all the oils, I want any, any uh, uh, lotions, any, anything that kids would put on their hands. I want that all off of them. So I have them use the water first, then handle this guy. And they can be very quick. Uh, we get sun kissed out at least, at the very least, every other day. Um, because I will go down, even though the kids are leaving on Friday, we got her out. That means Saturday I'll probably give her a break, but then Sunday I'll go back in. If she goes a week without being handled and you open that door and she decides to run, good luck catching her. She is very quick and she will climb right up the curtain. Lickety splink. Right up that curtain, let me split. She is gone and you're, yeah, you're spending a lot of time catching them, but she's used to being held. There's no threatening. There's no, I do, I'm not threatening her. Once again, she has no reason to bite me, and she can draw blood if she would choose to bite me, especially with these roaches. Um, I talked about what roaches had, a, we talked about the male with the horn. We talked about that protruded up the, what kind of skeleton do these guys have? Exoskeleton. Exoskeleton, that's a hard plate. That's an armor. She has to bite through that armor. So can she draw blood on your little delicate skin? Believe me, yes, <laughs> she can do that. So maybe not the, uh, the best animal. Now, bearded dragon, if you are experienced with animals, bearded dragons are great animals to have program animals. Now as I talk about these animals, the place that I have found to get, a lot of people are, wow, how would you get so many animals? Are you get like a mini zoo or what? No. Oh, we have a nature center and we get all of our animals 
She has a little bit of dirt on her tail here. Or he does, sorry, this is a newbie. Has a little bit of dirt on his tail. Uh, bearded dragons, found in Australia, they get their name bearded because of, woo, hey, because of the beard right here. Uh, when they get nervous or scared, they puff themselves up. They're like little kids on the playground. You know, like, come on, mate, you want some of it? You want some of me? Come on. Okay, making themselves bigger than they are, or, or pro wrestlers, one or the other. Um, so either, uh, no offense. But uh, these guys right here, they puff themselves up. They have these big, vicious spikes. Oh, no, these are flexible right here. But they look big and they look scary. Dingo comes along. Hey, you look like you would be good lunch. So I'm gonna run along, I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna eat you. Bearded dragon puffs up. Hey, no, you're not. He's huge. Dingo says, rethink this. <laughs> Didn't have breakfast. I'm gonna eat you. <laughs> Takes off running. Bearded dragon, he's scurrying across. No, they do not run on their hind leg. You see this tail? Okay, that, if I, no, it can't get that tail up here. Okay, it can't get it up there, so it cannot run, but he's booking across it. Thing goes fast. Bam, gets him by his tail. That tail, there are several joints in that tail well, that will break and then regenerate. Dingoes, when they hit that and blood from the body, the, the vessels in the body, they close. They snap shut, not another drop of blood lost. In the tail, the veins are still throwing that out. Okay, they're still, hey, we need to get that, we need to get that back up to the heart. So that vein is whoosh, throwing that up in there. Blood's going all over. Dingo's like, yeah, blood fast, I got you. Fear dragon. Scurries under a little rock, he hides out. Dingo has a little treat, and he ends up eating the tail. Um, so, but he did get a little treat, and then that will regenerate back. Great animal to have if you're experienced, and you can make sure that you feed it vegetables, mixed veggies, they love their veggies, and that's something that needs to be done every day. These are creatures that need to eat every single day, just like you and I. Okay, they're not like a snake, a once a week eater. He's just all over the place today. He's holding on for life. There we go. He does not like my arm. Um, so that's our, our bearded dragon. Right in there we have two of those um, at our nature center. Keeping with our lizard theme, um, we've, had, we've had goods, we've had bads, and then we've had, or we have our don't even think about it, and that's because of the size that they will get. That's not in inches, that is a feet. They grow very, quickly. Um, you have to make sure that you maintain a proper diet because they will get obese very quickly as well. Um, you have to keep them running around the room. You have to weed daily walks. Jade, uh, she's a female Savannah monitor. Jade comes out, she knows, hey, you need to start walking. And we have to coax her along and get her to move. And it's like, come on, come on. She's like, no, I'm just going to sit here and get fat because that's what I like to do. Give me another mouse. Um, so she doesn't get a lot. And you can see she was creeping along. Everyone hear the hiss? Let's see if we can get her. And that's just a, that's a reflex. Kind of like um, if someone comes up to you and they gently, you know, what are you doing? Touch my, don't even touch my face or anything. So it's, we have those reflexes and she's not gonna reflex now because she knew but she will also uh, do a little bit of, of hissing there she's gonna get uh, like I said a lot bigger than this and she's gonna definitely take two hands and she will then begin to also get her weekly uh, claw trimmings so I got claw trimmings I got an animal that when it bites a mouse it will grab the mouse it will crush the skull. Okay, so it has enough power to crush the skull and then just shake the dickens out of it until it's dead. 
as if crushing the skull wasn't enough, um, but it will. It wants to be sure of the kill, and then uh, will uh, will then swallow that animal whole. Will then swallow its prey whole. So they uh, can be a little little squirrely, but uh, something that that is if you're if you have the enclosure. And you should see the tank. I can get entertained. Well, that's not much to say because I'm not that big of a guy. Um, but we could, we could definitely, um, you know, travel around with her. And she doesn't live in this. Does not live in this. And lives in a big tank at home. And then we also got all of these animals from pet trade. From not through pet stores, but actual reptile shows that when I pick the Savannah Monitor out, I talk to them what I'm looking for. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll move on to uh, some other animals. And like the, most of these we have got from pet, pet trade, our milk snake, and I didn't put a picture up here of our milk snake because milk snakes, there are a lot of varieties and color patterns. So when you look at a uh, a milk snake you're not going to necessarily say oh yeah that's a that's a milk snake because you got to look at the different color patterns that they have these are constrictors um, now milk snake gets its name because milk snakes were found by the cows they were over by the cows near the milking station drinking milk yeah. I know Okay, they weren't drinking milk. They don't drink milk, but if you feed cows corn, oh, that's how we got the corn snake, because they eat corn, no! Oh! <laughs> but mice, there's corn, there's cream, invite the cousins, we got a family reunion. Oh, snap, party! <laughs> and everybody runs over there, and then the snakes will, uh, they look walk, like snakes are walking by. <laughs> um, there's this, this snake, um, snakes moving by, uh, slithering by. All of a sudden, hears all the chatter and sees what's going on. Boom! Goes in, grabs a mouse, swallows, constricts it, and every time it exhales, constricts a little more so that it can't expand its lung to get any oxygen. And then, as we go through, farmer comes in, sees a snake. Sees a milk bucket, snake was drinking up all my milk. <laughs> no offense, I don't think farmers really talk like that. But anyhow, they were mad and they were upset, so then they killed the snake because their milk snakes drink up. No, it had a mouse. It just saved you it was food cost. Okay, yeah, so there you go. These guys, great to have. This is a good animal to have. Once a week, Frozen mouth. Now, of course, we thaw it out. Uh, the room temperature, give that guy, they're great eaters, docile. Don't do a lot of moving around, fairly content with just staying, staying right here. But great to have lizards and snakes because then we can begin to look at the differences that reptile and similarities that reptiles have when we look at, oh, a uh, pillowcase, uh, does not live in the pillowcase, uh, <laughs> lives in a, in a large, okay, this is how it, <laughs> he, he was trying to creep out on me, um, this is what they travel in, because just like little kids, or big kids, uh, when the thunderstorm happens, what do we do, we pull blankets up over our head, because that's secure, this snake now has all of this cloth around it so it's secure it's a hiding spot for it right here and here you just want to make sure that the head's not there as you as you do that you want to make sure that you are are delicate now let's move on to a, a, a another these are a lot of people say these are good snakes to have and they're fairly common they're found in Africa and this is a ball python. Now ball pythons, the reason I say advanced is because they definitely need humidity control big time. 
Uh, because of the trade that was just an explosion, they were bred, they were inbred, there was more inbreeding, and there was, and it just continued on and kind of weakened the immune system that they have. Um, all very difficult to to feed. Jasmine, she ate Friday. She will not eat again for another two weeks because she's been on this trip. Because we we rotate between Jasmine and Monty, the ball python. Um, yeah. uh, so they are now. What I love about pythons, pythons have back on the anal plate, back by both on each side of the anal plate are two spurs, tiny anal spurs left over from the feet of evolution. Er, wrong. They're used for breeding purposes. Um, Toledo Zoo was the first ones to print that, that they have realized that these spurs are actually beginning to hook together and males are using them to stimulate females to lay eggs so that they can fertilize them. Uh, now, with a ball python, you see, they don't get super large. Um, they, they're a good animal, once again, but you got to be able to devote the time to it and know how much you're going to hold this. Uh, but once again, I can feed this in a classroom. I can take out of the teacher's lounge. Boy, would they love that. <laughs> I will bring from my house a frozen mouse on Thursday. I'll, 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 I'll keep that in maybe my lunch pail. And then Thursday night before I leave, I'm going to set that in my desk drawer. That's going to thaw out 12 more hours. As soon as I go in, that's room temp. Ooh, a little gooey. Perfect. <laughs> Boom. I'm going to drop it in. Or let's say I'm just going to bring it in Friday, set it on my desk. Kids are like, that's awesome, <coughs> Mr. Bear. Can I touch it? Well, we're going to, you know, we don't play with the food. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to go do spelling. Okay. Or whatever. <laughs> well, we don't, we're not going to put, and then we're going to end up giving that to the ball python and the kids will be able to then see that animal actually eat and uh, see that process of the constriction, even with dead uh, mice, even with frozen mice, they will still constrict. That is just a natural, and what we do is when we feed with tongs, we'll feed it, it'll grab it, and it's got it, and then what we will do is pull it away. So we pull it away, we jiggle that mouse, we fight with that snake to make sure that it realizes that this is a live animal, that this is, okay, this, this is crazy, I, I've, got, I've got a live one here. Now, See, it's pretty good size. Two years ago, went to a reptile show. I bought this snake uh, at a reptile show and brought it home in a butter dish. Two years ago. And a, oh, it was a little butter dish. <laughs> People were like, yeah, from like, no. It was a tiny little, little butter dish, like a little Land of the Lakes thing. Red tailed boa uh, picked out a beautiful male. He was gorgeous, bright red tail, even better than, more beautiful than hers. And I got talking to the guy. We use these for fifth and sixth grade. We have a reptile, you know, reptile. And, um, you can see, likes to move a little more than some of the others. Okay, this is it's a mover and a shaker. So this is one that's going to move around. Uh, it's going to grab. It is. They are primarily arboreal snakes. So with that, when we look at being an arboreal snake, you're going to climb whether you like it or not. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> um, with, here we go. The male quickly, he said, quickly said, no, no, you do not want the male and said, here, this is what you want. Because these are, the female is more docile. Yeah, really? Um, the female is much easier to handle, especially, she was coming down, when they begin to get large. Eight to 10 feet. 
just watch how she may uh, want to get around your chair. Just all I need to do is get the pillowcase because I will not be able to put her in by myself. Come on. All right. There we go. Oh, Makita. Come on. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, you want to grab that? All right. There we go. We got her. Okay. So Makita's in here. Makita's set. I can feel her head. She's trying to pop up out of here. We'll have to, to work, work her down in there. Uh, that's why I don't even think about it. Uh, is the rating that I'm going to give the, the red tail boa because of how uh, quick they are. And this is one of our program animals. She is, we, we use her, we use Chesnia as a program animal as well. Chesnia is not fully grown yet. Not yet. She is still growing. We're hoping that soon she'll taper out. Um, every year we get her, we do measurements, we do weighing to find out, okay, how's she doing? Uh, she had a severe burn on from a lamp that left a, a, a scar back in here. Well, she's wrapped around. She's, she's having fun. Uh, and that scar uh, set her back a ways. So uh, she was having a lot of trouble. She ended up then getting, uh, got a, a fungus on in some of her scales. We're having a lot of trouble with Chesnia. One of the really cool things um, about Chesnia is she will allow, you can see, double row of teeth right in there. Double row of teeth. All of steaks, their teeth, all of them, the teeth are hooked back so that when they bite and you jump forward, uh, that's not going to happen. When you go forward, you are stuck with that animal. Uh, one of our rules at the Shindo is that no one gets Chesnia out alone. Um, because why get an animal out that I'm scared of? I'm not scared of her. I respect her. <laughs> I respect her strength. I respect her power, and I respect her instinct. Her instinct is to constrict. She is a red tail boa constrictor. So you think, oh, well that, that first snake, Makita, she was kind of cute. She was kind of cool. Okay, I'll see you in about five, six years later and see how cute this animal is when you're buying rabbits, when you're buying guinea pigs, when you're buying rat, when you're mortgaging your house to, to feed this animal. Uh, so this is, um, yeah, like I said, this is just a beautiful animal, but definitely you need to look at the animals before you decide to uh, buy them. Right now, I, I ended perfect because I, I wanted to leave just a few moments. I know uh, in, in a lot of our seminars we may not have too many open session general forum, but if, if you have any questions, comments, snide remarks, uh, now would be the time I'd like to take those. Otherwise I will be here afterwards packing up so that if you if you want to come up and see some of the animals uh, you can definitely do that. But right now I just want to, are there any general questions or anything like that that anyone, I will be posting the PowerPoint uh, that will be posted. Will there be a link with that, Cheyenne? Yeah, there should be a YouTube link. Okay, so we will have that and I will try to get that later on.